bricks. It's like sausages coming out of a sausage factory. They all look alike, and they come out of one mold. And that just talks to us about human man-made religious theologies and schools of thought. This morning, I got on that a little. How that I went five years to a theological school. And brother, they taught me what they wanted. And I mean what they concocted and took out of the Bible and claim that this was the teaching of the church. This is the true word of God. This is the gospel. But brother, I found out that it was altogether different than many other theological schools and seminaries in the same area of Los Angeles. The Baptist school didn't believe it, what I was taught in my school. The Church of Christ, their school was different. The Lutherans was different. The Methodists was different. The Pentecostals, brother, I mean, they're divided up and split up, and they got more varieties than Heinz ever thought of. All these schools of thought, Claiming to be right. You know what? Actually, when you get born again, that's the time that you're going to have to hunt for something called the way. Our young brother Forkan sung those beautiful words which Jesus spoke, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. I wonder what he meant by the way. All you have to do is read a few places in the Bible, and especially the book of Proverbs. I mean, he's loaded on talking about the way, the evil way. Jesus spoke about the way, didn't he? He said, enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. That lead it somewhere. Where is it going? To destruction. And many, 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 many there be that go thereat. Pitiful, isn't it? He's talking about the true and the false church. He's talking about the way out here that's so broad. And actually it consists of many ways. Solomon said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways, plural, ways of death. He's talking about the false church. Proverbs 5, Proverbs 7, Proverbs 9 talks about these two women, the foolish woman and the wise woman. No wonder Jesus said there'd be two women grinding at the mill. Now one, two of them. He said there'd be two houses built, one on the rock and one on the sand. He talked about two vines, the true vine and the false vine. <laughs> oh, yes, there's two kingdoms today. And the mystery of it is that it's all growing in one great field. The wheat and the tares are growing together. And they look alike. They tell me, I don't know, I might have saw a tear somewhere, but they say that it looks alike. 
you got to really be a farmer and know what seed produced it. There is a difference, but it looks very similar. And of course, in the parable that Jesus spoke, all of those workers said to the husbandmen, let us go out there and pluck up all these tares. He said, not so, lest if you start plucking them out, you may pluck the weed out. Let it all grow until the harvest. And then we'll separate the wheat from the tares. Some people think that that's the unsaved world in the church out here. Oh, no. That field is religion. Because the devil got in religion. You have to read Second, Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 13 through 15. Paul really lines it out there. Might as well start with the first verse of the 11th chapter. As he said, some folks thought he was a little off his rocker. Had a few marbles that he lost. He was screws loose. He said, okay, if you think that I'm foolish, you bear with me in my folly. Because I'm going to tell you something. And brother, when he started in there, he showed that the body of Christ is a pure virgin body. And she's a spouse to one husband. And that she's not to be defiled. The church that Jesus is coming after is without a spot or a blemish, without a wrinkle or a blemish or any such thing. It's holy and without blemish before him in love. Sister Forkan talked about love. Love, Jesus said, this is the apex of you testing if you're my follower. If you have love one to another. Wednesday night, Pastor Penn from Pomona was here. When we were going home, he said, brother, he said, I sure felt the love of God from those people. He said, they came up, shook my hand, talked to me. Though they knew me a hundred years. So I could feel something from them. Said most churches you go to, it's a hypocritical sham, a pretense, and a put on. But he said, I could really feel it in that church. Well, that just didn't happen overnight. That spirit of charity was cultivated here. Love is a fruit. It's got to be cultivated and grow to maturity. Yes. One of the basic truths that you get when you come around this people is what is charity? What charity really is? There's people who live a lifetime in religion out here in this church world and don't know the first things about 1 Corinthians 13. They read it but they don't know what it's all about. They don't understand. Pitiful, isn't it? Five years I went to theological school, didn't only study theology, I studied advanced theology. I mean, they re I really got inoculated. But on the inside, my Holy Ghost would say, son, this ain't it. <laughs> Excuse the, the language. This isn't it. Keep searching. Keep looking. Keep seeking. No wonder Jeremiah said, Stand ye in the ways and ask for the old paths. Wherein is the good way? And when you found it, walk in it. Well, there's all these ways out here. What ways? These religious ways that men have invented. Man's an inventor. One verse 
I think it's 120, I know, 726 of Ecclesiastes. He said, but this, below this have I found. Is that how it goes? No. Uh, correct, correct, correct. But I was going to get the, the verse before it there. Uh, I find more bitter than death the woman. She's talking about the false church whose hands are snares and nets. No, wait a minute. Yeah, whose heart is snares and nets, snares and bands. Uh-huh. Let's get that verse if you've got it right there, please. Okay. I find more bitter than death. What could be more bitter than death? He tells you. The woman. What woman? The false woman. The foolish woman. The false church. Keep going. Whose heart is snares and nets. That's all of these religious systems out here. That snares people in it. Okay. Her hands are as bands. Brother, that's her ministry that's going to tie you up. I mean. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. Solomon had the picture, didn't he? Let's get Jeremiah 5, verse, uh, verse 25, 26 there. Know where he says, among my people are found wicked men. That's the, yeah. next, verse. That's the next verse, okay. For among my people are found wicked men. For among my people, not the devil's gang out there, but among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. They lay wait. As he that set snares. Uh huh, as he that set it snares. They set a trap. They catch, men. they catch men. Keep going. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Aha, uh -huh, they become great and they're waxen rich. Yes. Big, rich, old denominations that got money to burn. That's what it's talking about. All these nets and snares means they're religious ways that they've invented. They're cute little programs, their forms, their rituals that's so appealing to the carnal mind and to the carnal man. Did you know in every religious move there's a religious spirit. Every faith has a name. And every one of these names has a body and has a spirit in it. You can go to any church and you can feel that religious spirit. And the Lord said in Isaiah, uh, what was that, 57, 1, wasn't it? They take a covering, but not of my spirit, saith the Lord that they may add sin to sin. And so here we are in a world of religious confusion. And Paul said these words to the church in Corinth. When you start reading the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, You'll find out that Paul was dealing with a problem there where division, sedition was coming into that church. And he made a great plea that they'd all be one 
he beseeched them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that they all speak the same thing, yes. that there be no divisions among them, but that they be perfectly joined together with the same mind and the same judgment. This makes one body. For every part of the body will take orders from the head. And it will function as a beautiful living organism accomplishing the will of God. I wonder whether our master passion in life is to do the will of God. If it isn't, it should be that controlling force and passion of our lives to do the will of God. Jesus said, many will say, Lord, Lord. Didn't he? Many, many would use his name. But he said, the only ones that are going to get in the kingdom of heaven are those who do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many religious people are going to knock. Lord, Lord, open unto us. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Cast out devils. Did many wonderful works. A lot of works. Just like Cain brought all of his works, piled it on a huge altar thinking that he'd win the favor of God. But he did it all in vain. And that's why Paul bewailed the fact when he talked to some of those churches, he said, I fear lest I bestowed labor upon you in vain. Uh-huh. That's not the doctrine of, of eternal security. For once saved, always saved. Brother, you can be lost if you don't keep your faith and confidence from the beginning to the end. You can get lost anywhere along the way. You can get sidetracked. And that's why 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 4, start reading. He talked about that church, and he said, I fear lest like the serpent beguile leave through his subtlety. Your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity in Christ. How would that happen? Brother Paul, since you're the Bible reader tonight, help me please. Verse 4. For if he that comes and preaches another Jesus, whom you have not preached, whom you have not preached or if you receive another spirit, uh -huh, if you receive another spirit which you have not received, that you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Now look at he mentions three things. See, you can... Come under the influence of the wrong spirit, the wrong gospel, and the wrong Jesus. Did you know most people in religion don't even know who Jesus was or what he really came to do for them? Pitiful, isn't it? They don't understand God nor his plan. And especially here at the close of this Gentile age. There's only 21 years left to the year 2000. And what a great crashing bang. That last curtain's going to be dropped on the last scene of Gentile action. It's not far away. Today I got into that a little, showing you there's only nine years left for Israel to be one generation old in this world. Brother, all these things are happening in this generation. Brother, we've got the tumults, the strikes, the riots, kingdoms toppling over, 
communism taken over. One time Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Brother, the devil's out to deceive the whole world, and if possible, the very elect. Yes. Yes. If possible. Brother, there's all kinds of spirits and Jesus is out here being preached. The reason we're different than any other religious people is because God committed to us a knowledge of the truth that pulled us out of the broad way, hallelujah, and showed us the straight gate and the narrow way that leadeth to life. How can you be there if it's going to lead you there? Most preachers preach you already got it. Hit the altar and you're a finished product for heaven. This Bible won't bear that out. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He didn't say save for heaven. He just said, you'll be saved from all of your past sins. And it's Romans 3.25. 3, he tells us that we've been justified and saved and salvaged from all of the sins that are past. And then in 1 Peter 1.10, 2 uh, Peter 1.10, he says there that he that lacketh these things, add dear faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, and so on, is blind. He's talking about Christians. He said they're blind. They cannot see afar off. Just like Paul said to the Hebrews that they were dull of hearing. They were deaf. They couldn't hear. We've got the, this type of spiritual people in existence. And they form the bulk of Christendom, so-called. Spiritually blind, blind leaders of the blind leading the blind, and they're all headed for the ditch. Pitiful. They're blind, cannot see afar off. And they have forgotten that they were purged from their old sins. Brother, that were taken care of through Christ's sacrifice on Calvary. Blotted out, buried in the deepest sea to be remembered against you no more. Beautiful to be saved, isn't it? But you're only saved from your past sins and the new birth makes you an infant, a little child, a babe in the arms of the church, which is your spiritual mother. And now comes the tough job of growing up to what the Bible calls perfection or maturity. A perfect man to fill out that measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. But you can be snared and caught in a religious organization. Some preacher can come along and tell you you've got to keep the Sabbath. Or you shouldn't do this or you should do that and you'll go for down. It's not the gospel at all. Not the gospel that Jesus and the apostles preached. And you're snared, you're taken. They catch men. We just re read it, isn't it so? Drop down to verse 13, please. 2 Corinthians 11, 13. I don't know why I'm on this tonight, but I am. Maybe somebody needs this here. Now look at what Paul is saying. This gang that's preaching another Jesus, sowing another spirit and teaching you another gospel that I didn't bring you here in Corinth. Paul never did teach division, separation, 
which is iniquity. Spiritual iniquity just means separation and division or insurrection against the authority of God, the same original sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden. And that's the sin that we're not saved from when you get converted, that original sin. You're only saved from your sins of committal that you committed in your lifetime. Thank God they're gone. But after you're born again and a new creature in Christ, there's a big battle going on between the flesh and the spirit. Why? That spirit of hostility and rebellion against God and his way of doing it is still in us. Somewhere that's going to have to die. This must be crucified with Christ. And wherever Paul went, he preached, Christ and him crucified. And if we're going to walk in his steps, we're going to have to go through crucifixion. Brother, you don't enjoy resurrection until you experience crucifixion. And this is the part of the gospel that Babylon doesn't want, rejects, turns down, won't have. Because they love self. They love the flesh. They're caught in a man-made, carnal-minded, religious, mechanized, organized, democratic form of church government, which is the wrong spirit. It's a sectarian spirit. And that's not the spirit of the body of Christ. Once we see this, all of us will come running out of Babylon. Come out of her, my people. This woman, that's more bitter than death. Better that you died and went into a lost oblivion than to get caught in this false church and give your life and labor and time and money to build a false system that God in his wrath is going to, has already eternally judged and will finally issue his wrath and punishment, judgment and destruction upon it. For Babylon's going to fall. And Babylon just means all of the religious invented ways of man out here. And there's 666 of them. That's just a total, complete number, perfect number of man-made, invented religious systems. Isaiah 4, 1 says, seven women take a hold of one man. It's the same thing. In Songs of Solomon 6, 8, said, for there's three score queens, four score concubines, virgins without number. There's your seven women taking a hold of one man. It's a bigger number. And when John saw the vision on the Isle of Patmos, said the number was 666. It's just man's full, complete works all caboodled together. It's the great dragon, that old serpent called Satan and the devil. The whole thing together. That serpentine spirit of man that's deceived man down through the centuries of time because he didn't understand God nor his will nor his plan nor the way that he deals 